Hi everyone, this is Julia with theflyingcat.net slash wellness. If you are looking for free wellness opportunities that I'm offering uh, during our coronavirus time of lockdown and hanging out at home, so virtual wellness opportunities. So flyingcat.net in general, and then flyingcat.net slash wellness um, for registration and recordings of everything that we're doing. So thank you for those of you who are here today. Uh, we're recording with a couple folks and we'll go through um, some things. So if you have your tea or and or your smudge or an oil that you like, a smell that you like, we'll start there. <clears throat> I'm gonna burn some cedar. And do a little bit <clears throat> of smudging for myself and for this space that we're all in together. My physical space and our energetic space together. And for all of you out there, if you would like to receive this. As a blessing to fortify you. Grab your journal, grab your tea, your smudge. So, Welcome everyone. I hope we're all feeling grounded, centered, and connected. And if not, that is the goal for today. So if you're sitting however you are, if you wanna just put your feet on the ground or if you're comfortable um, sitting, if you're sitting on a couch cross-legged, just get real um, connected to the bottom of your body. Feel what's underneath you in any case. And same with if you're holding your tea, just really feel that warmth the smells, the sounds, just come into the space that you are in, even though we're looking at each other on a screen, just be with yourself, come into presence. Let's take three breaths, inhale. Exhale, feel your feet, send your exhale down your body into the earth. Fully exhale, inhale, and send your exhale down, 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 sink down. So extending a tail, if you like to imagine that from your root, inhale one more time. All the way down through the crust of the earth to the core, and exhale, send that breath down, send that energy down. So we're still present, but we are grounding, feeling the ground, and then extending our awareness down, 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 and meeting the earth. As much as we uh, can lean into our relationship with the earth that we have had to this point, keep sending your energy, your awareness down, <clears throat> and just remembering beautiful spaces on this planet that have fed you and it can be as simple as your own backyard or you know, outside right where you are. Or places that you've traveled to. Remember those places. And just let them visit you a little bit. Stay here, sending that root tail or line down into the earth and feeling a magnetism, like a pool a pool down to the earth and the earth is a magnet <clears throat> hugging back to you. And just stay with that. If a particular place or space has um, really presented itself to you, sit there. Breathe. And just allowing a gentle guidance from that space if there's something there for you. Or just a nice visit, just like with a friend saying hello and thank you.
Right. You're welcome to stay here while I read and talk. I'm going to uh, talk about our card that I pulled last night for this uh, and also give you some journal prompts if you want to write. And you feel free to write right now while I'm talking if you want, or again, just stay in your meditation with your tea or just seated. So horse is the card that I pulled. This is from a Pixie Light Horse uh, Oracle deck that uh, you can't get anymore, sorry. Um, so I'll read this to you. The title is Freedom from 2010. Horse flies over fences, combing the groundedness of earth with the lofty dreams of the sky realms. His mane and tail catch the breeze as if driven by magical wind. The untamed spirit of horse can be civilized when it chooses, but most often it can be found embracing the wild ride like no other totem. Horse is a vehicle. Hello, wild ride. Here we are. Horse is a vehicle and, trusting, and, trust, and a trusty traveling companion when one is called to go a great distance. <laughs> Feel that <clears throat> right now. Guided in the moment by movement itself maybe staying in our physical, doing our movement practices. Horse inspires the stamina needed to run away from danger and into power. And here we are making a decision every moment to do that. Where negative thoughts or obstacles present, leap over them on the back of horse and hang on for the thrill of possibility which lies over the mountain. We are not yet over the mountain. <laughs> we are maybe climbing up to the top of the mountain in this journey right now. <clears throat> so it's uh, March 20th, 2020. It's spring equinox. Yesterday was spring equinox. So we have um, some literature on that. Honoring Equinox is available at theflyingcat.net slash wheel. It's on sale this weekend. Not that this is a plug for this, but that it is appropriate um, for Rabbit to be present at this time during what's happening in the world right now. <clears throat> Rabbit brings us um, the qualities of creativity, generativeness, um, and also fear and looking at our fear triggers. Whoop. So getting your journal out, if you do want to write any of these prompts down, they are in um, pretty much all of the emails I've been sending out since February. If you're on the newsletter, they're all the way at the bottom. They are spring transition journal prompts. And spring transition, in general, on a, on a good year, <laughs> is, is um, it's dangerous, it's um, liminal. Things are shifting from one very different place to another very different place. So it's like extremely appropriate that this is happening with our culture shifting from a very, um, well, from where we were to wherever the heck we're going. So we are in the liminal space with this as a collective, just as well as we are in a liminal space with the spring where the heat has been rising in the trees, in the earth, the little crocus and spring ephemerals are now starting to push up. The sap was coming up, now that's over. So that's one of the first signs of pre-spring around in bulk is the sap rising, tapping the trees. And from there, we have some winds that typically come and that's, you know, we have, it's typical to see like tornadoes and weird storms and green skies all of a sudden in the middle of the day and that kind of thing. So that's going to be coming too. And that's very ungrounding given the social circumstances happening. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot to navigate. So looking at our triggers around fear and not to trigger them, but to help give us some padding. So some of the questions here, <clears throat> Let me read a little bit more. The earth is preparing to come to life once again and is pushing energy forward. You might not notice her small, subtle messages. So this is from the newsletter. But you may feel a discomfort within or a curiosity. 
this is your inner essence awakening along with the earth. You are going to become a new person, someone you've never been before, <laughs> for sure. Let's get ready. So our journal questions. What does your commitment to deep self-care look like right now? Just right now. <clears throat> this is always a question I'm asking because that was part of my training with um, doing spirit work is always looking at what am I doing for my, my self care in general? Like, okay, I'm eating. That's good. You know, I'm uh, moving my body a little bit or I'm taking deep breaths. Maybe that's the minimum. What am I doing for deep self care? What am I willing to do? And um, right now for me, that looks like salt baths, which um, <clears throat> I, I love how I feel after. I don't always want to do it like a little kid. I'm like, no, I don't want to take a bath, <laughs> but I know I'm going to feel better. Um, journaling is a good one for me. So another question, how can you help yourself during transition? How can you help yourself during transition? <sighs> transition is always hard, even if it's good when we're uprooting from one thing to another and, you know, undoing, depending on how many years, how much energy we've invested in something, uprooting that takes a lot of energy. Coming to a new place, being in this liminal space in between for a while, sometimes a couple of years and not knowing how the new life is going to be. And then the energy of rooting into that life, it's, it's ungrounding, it's uprooting right? So how can you help yourself during transition? Okay, and next, are there stagnant or stuck areas that you are interested in opening to move soon? Are there stagnant or stuck areas that you are interested in opening to move soon. So to move energy out or shifting through any stuck or heavy places. And this is, you'll, you'll probably find out more information when we go through the practice here in a minute, um, rather than thinking about it and trying to like see it from a mental perspective when we do the treatment, you'll probably feel some things that you maybe didn't know with your mind, with your mentality, you know? So just taking a note of like what you, what you think, where you're blocked or stuck, um, and you don't have to do anything about it. That's the thing, just, it's just an inventory. You don't have to do anything with it. You don't have to change anything, but just looking at these things. So no pressure from the question, just observe and be aware. How can you embody the powerful aspects of your power animal or plant ally? Now I want to ask you, because we visited uh, land and a space, a space that you've been to that maybe had medicine for you or has a message for you or has some kind of powerful aspect. I want to ask you in that way. So how can you embody the powerful aspects of this land that is speaking to you? you can certainly look at the power animals or the plant allies. So I work with these three, <clears throat> three different realms to look at power aspects myself. So these are the things that I teach. The next thing we'll be learning in journey is um, leaning into journeying to land or being with land and learning from it. So that's why I'm, I'm focusing on that right now. And it's a very appropriate time to do that, I think, to listen to the earth, especially right now while, while she's getting to do what she needs to do while we stay out of it for a while. So just checking in like that with her. How has your animal or plant or land interacted or shown you and when to carry these aspects into your day to day? Okay, that's kind of convoluted, but how has this teacher shown you how to carry these aspects and when to carry these, these powerful aspects, these power strength <clears throat> characteristics that you're being shown. 
Okay, and then the last one is, do you resonate with one of these acronyms for fear? F, everything and run. Feel everything and rise. False evidence appearing real. There are hundreds of acronyms for the word fear. You can find online for sure. These are just a few of the different aspects that I thought were pretty poignant around when we get triggered, when we get afraid and what's real and what's not and trusting that um, feelings aren't facts but they do need to be honored so how can you stay centered when triggered <clears throat> is really the bottom line and be be present with yourself not disassociate not cope not um, try to numb or push it away or you know be okay with being uncomfortable for a period of time not not as a lifestyle but in the moment and what you can do to help yourself. Coping and self-soothing are not bad things, um, but again, we don't wanna necessarily live that way. We want to address these issues, these wounds, these triggers, so we can clean them and heal them. And then they become our strengths. That's our shadow work. That's part of how that works. Okay, so thank you for that moment. Let me read through that. We've got another 20 minutes. So let's um, do our treatment. Have a cup of water, go to the bathroom, more tea, do your thing, take a little mini break if you need to. I'm going to shift around a little bit. Okay, so we'll be working with um, our hands, and that's it, and our body, our energy body. So if you want to do a little exercise, we're going to feel the energy of our hands. Just bring your palms out wide, and this is always fun. Take a stretch. <laughs> Feels good. And then bring your hands close in, and notice where you start to feel maybe an edge or a connection, or a warmth, maybe a buzzing. You can close your eyes if it helps. And then and stop about that point where you feel something, or where you notice something, or where you sense a, a shift or a change. Go back out again, let's do it again. You can shake your hands to clear them if you want. And then bring the hands back in. And notice if something is different this time. And where you start to feel a real solid kind of pushback or a buzz or a heat. Maybe you don't feel anything and that's okay. But notice what happens. Let's bring the hands in and push past that point. Draw them in close slowly together and notice what happens when you get closer. And let's take them out one more time, <clears throat> out wide, shake them out. So we're clearing and then bringing the hands in one more time. See how um, far out you can notice feeling something. And again, just pay attention to how it feels. Okay, and let's take them out again, shake and stretch up, do as you like here, do a little stretch shift. And we'll bring the hands down. So I'm gonna roll out back here so you can see right hand to the root. So the root's gonna be between the legs, about um, eight inches or so out from the body. Really um, 
we think about the root just going straight down into the earth, just like we did at the start. So anyway, you're just gonna put your hands, you have a chakra here, you have a chakra here, and you're gonna put them together and just allow a white light or a warmth, a healing energy to come into your root from your hand. <clears throat> Take some deep breaths, feel free to close your eyes again. And just feel that if you wanna add your other hand to your first hand, so both hands are giving that energy. And just notice what you feel, take a minute, take some breaths. Notice your feet on the ground and maybe returning to that uh, where we started, inhaling and exhaling to sink down and connect to the center of the earth again. Feeling that magnetism or drawing that line all the way down into the core of the earth, letting her hold you like that. Feeling the invitation from her, not just doing it. So we're gonna keep one hand at the root and take the next hand to the sacral area. So the space, <clears throat> excuse me, between the hips and again out, maybe six to eight inches. Again, notice if you bring your hand out and then pull it in toward the body, notice where you feel that similar kind of feeling that you did with your hands. You can also literally touch your body if that works better for you. And here we're gonna be connecting the root and the sacral. So you're not sure it's okay. We're working um, with an open mind. Maybe leaning into our imagination to be open to noticing what's here for us. And similar to sending our energy down into the earth, we're also listening for an invitation from the body or we're trying to perceive that openness to where these areas want to let this energy come in. So really receiving it, not just pushing the energy. When you are ready, we're gonna shift up. So we'll take the bottom hand to where the top hand is. And then we'll take the top hand up about six inches to just above the navel. Same distance from the body or literally touching the body if that works best for you. Same intention, just feeling or sending the energy in to connect the chakras. So what we're doing is harmonizing our energy body and letting the body receive. Receive alignment, receive communication. And allowing, again, allowing these centers to show us what expression is correct for right now, the most optimal and best version or feeling or way of processing in connection with all the other chakras, all the other energy centers. Okay. 
Again, when you're ready to, we'll shift up. We'll bring the bottom hand to the top hand and bring the top hand up to the heart center. And so just listening, inviting, <clears throat> and again, remembering to maybe notice um, the areas that feel resistant or feel different than what you've noticed so far. And perhaps those are areas where your energy might be stuck. What we talked about in the journal prompts. No judgment, just observing, just paying attention. So you have the information and you can be empowered. <clears throat> Again, um, let's shift. If you want to stay anywhere that's feeling like it's really getting what it needs, please do that. You can follow along, you know, at your own pace. So we'll bring the bottom hand up whenever you're ready to, to the heart. Man, that feels good. Just doing both hands at the heart. And then shifting. If you're ready to, yeah, you can go on up to um, high heart and or throat so we can do a little bit of both so high hearts right in between throat and heart center all with the same kind of um, intention and awareness curiosity Shifting to the throat if you are in the high heart. <clears throat> Bottom hand can either stay at heart center or come up to high heart. And you're ready again, shifting. So bottom hand to throat, top hand to third eye, center of the brow. Again, just noticing, paying attention, still feeling your feet on the ground or your seat grounded, that connection to the earth while we're here and just enjoying, giving yourself some attention right now. Just enjoy. Even if you're not sure, you feel uncertain, try to enjoy this moment, this process, just for what it is. You might be just learning and you can always do this and the more you do it the more you'll start to understand how your senses work and what's going on in these different places
So again, if you want to need to stay longer, do when you're ready to, we'll shift the bottom hand to the third eye, maybe stretch out your other arm if you need to, if it's getting tired. And you can shift the hands, you don't have to keep um, the same ones in the same position and be flexible about it. So the top hand to the crown of the head. So this center palm connecting with the very top crown of the head, center of the palm connecting with the third eye still. Sometimes my hand is directed to shift or move into a different, you know, just a subtle shift into different parts of these chakras. Notice if you feel that kind of pulling or shifting like a, a natural um, better connection or a place that needs a little more uh, boost. We'll take the bottom hand now and cross it over the top hand and turn that palm up for Connecting to your higher self, your creator, to the heavens. So this point of entry where we come in and leave, where we, um, when we're little ones, and when we are done with our time here. Often when I'm working on people and I get to this point where I do this application for them, pretty much every single time I will see them go, oh. and you know, um, maybe the treatment's complete or they feel more complete. And we're getting, those of us doing it for ourselves, we're getting a nice arm workout. <laughs> And opening the lungs, so as you're lifted, maybe take some deep breaths into your upper chest, just because we have that space. Also teach yoga, so I'm always thinking about that, too. I'm bringing the hands down, maybe out to the sides, feeling all the way out, reaching out, stretching out, and taking the arms down, even to the ground if you want to touch your feet or sides of the hips or the ground this big bubble of space that you are in all the time. And that is your energy field. So that's another, um, it's your filter for your day-to-day -day essentially. And it can get clogged as well um, or off or have issues also. We can talk about that another time. But as you reach out that way or you reach out this way and behind you as well, that's about as far as your your bubble goes, or some call it the egg of light. I've been hearing that a lot lately. So thank you for doing that practice. I hope you feel something. <laughs> hope you feel better or you feel um, more connected. And just, just stay in that for a moment if you want to be um, still in that. And I'm, I'm going to sing to you guys. <laughs> And um, feel free to join in if you know it or um, come back and sing it and learn it. <clears throat> We are opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the earth. We are opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the earth. We are opening. We are opening. We are opening. We are opening. 
We are opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the earth. We are opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the earth. We are opening. We are opening. We are opening. We are opening. Thank you so much for joining today. Blessings um, on your way. And if you would like to learn more, <clears throat> excuse me, about the Wheel of the Year, so the Equinox, which is was technically yesterday, um, but you know we have this whole weekend to observe. You can go to theflyingcat.net slash wheel and get this awesome shirt <laughs> journal so you always know what's happening. Um, and the easing, which is on sale this weekend. And also, if you want to learn about chakras, this is what I wanted to find. Chakras, your energy system, the vortices that we just went through, these seven centers. You can go to chakras let's see the flyingcat.net slash chakras and there is a free guided meditation there that you can do um, similar to what we did but with colors and there's also a free tutorial there on every single one of the chakras so it details um, for free the sacral chakra is located between the hips extends in a funnel shape forward and a funnel shape backwards it is your relationship energy center connecting you to others and your creativity. Ways to support your sacral chakra are expressing your creativity, dancing, painting, crafting, healthy sex. To connect to your sacral chakra, sit in silence and visualize a bright, brilliant orange color between your hips. Symptoms of a malfunctioning sacral, sacral chakra are low sex drive, no desire to be creative, inability to generate or accept appropriate financial support. So that is the mini mini tutorial, the little burst that we have there that's free. And again, your sacral chakra is down here, just FYI. And uh, that will lead you then, there are links for uh, much more in-depth um, e-courses on the chakras. So you can click through to any of those to learn more. And those are all $19.99, I think, right now. And I'm totally down for giving discounts. If you do wanna try something and you're curious, just reach out to me at info at theflyingcat.net. I want everyone to have access to this work, which is why I'm doing this. Um, so, but I did put a lot of work into that, you know. So if you do wanna go check that out, there are journey prompts within that course. There's more guided meditations. There's more journal prompts um, in those places. So there's a whole bunch of content and a whole bunch of ways that we can get connected um, on the website, flyingcat.net. And thank you so much. For those who came today and those who have um, watched this post recording, I really appreciate you all. And um, yeah, you'll see this at theflyingcat.net slash wellness. I'm taking donations for these um, free offerings, but I do not expect it and I'm very happy to put these things out. So I hope you enjoyed it. Take care of yourselves and I will see you um, in an hour for art making. <laughs> So we'll switch hats, switch over. All right. Thanks, guys.